الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه مباركا عليه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى جل جلاله وعم نواله والصلاة والسلام على سيد الحبيب المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, Have you seen the one who denies the religion? He is the one who doesn't encourage to feed the poor. And he is the one who repels the orphans. Repelling orphans. You see, the worldview that Islam has in keeping stability in this world among people and in the society that we have. We generally understand that we must look after people that we're connected to and that we know. For example, people we know meaning our own relatives, our parents, our children, our brothers and sisters and our extended families, cousins, etc. We also have an understanding of looking after people who live close by us and that's why you have the emphasis in Islam about neighbors and the Prophet ﷺ encouraging good treatment, good interaction with our neighbors as well. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us to be good with people we're connected to, likewise in Islam we're also recommended and strongly encouraged to help one another out even if we don't know the other person. So people we're not generally connected to, we're also supposed to have a good interaction and an excellent interaction with them as well. And in this case, we have two particular categories of people. And generally, you get this category of people from the kind of circumstance we find ourselves in today around the world, where there are massive upheavals. There are numerous people that are being killed. There's a massive diaspora of people from various different countries going to other countries. As you've seen numerous people coming into Europe as well. Uh, Germany has taken about a million refugees in and the other countries, there's numerous refugees in many, many other countries all around Europe and Scandinavia as well. So what we have is in this kind of a situation, you have two people who generally fare the worst of this, the widows and the orphans. Generally, the men tend to get by because they can work, they're able, they can do these things. The women would be lumbered with the children generally, and it would be much more difficult sometimes to find work. And a lot of the time, they actually have a problem in terms of being abused in this situation. Many turn to vocations that they would never ever dream of doing, and which is really sad. And then the worst still is how you deal with the orphans. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has some commands about this and he really, really speaks, criticizes those people in, in the Quran, he criticizes those people who uh, have no idea, have no compassion, uh, have nothing to do with orphans. And that's really sad. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa encouraged orphans in a very intense way that a person should look after them. So I'm going to go through a, a few a few hadith in this in this regard which really gives us an understanding of this and inshallah it will spur us to do a bit more for them you know not everybody here will be able to able to open up their houses and take in an orphan right i mean there's a lot of paperwork there's a lot of legalities that you have to undergo for that however we also know that alhamdulillah we have a fostering agency here and we also have numerous people in our community that do fostering and that if you do it for the right reason, with the right intention, there's a huge amount of reward for that. And I know that you also get paid for this. So, I mean, there are these financial incentives for doing that as well. So, in terms of, in terms of all of that, uh, let me mention the first hadith here that's related by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As-sa'i ala al-armila wal-masakeen or wal-miskeen kal-mujahidi fi sabilillah. This is a general narration that anybody who makes an effort, who makes an effort, you know, to rehouse, to benefit, to look after, to facilitate for uh, whatever that may be, whatever kind of effort a person makes, 
behind widows and behind uh, poor people in general, the needy in general, the needy in general, then this person is like the mujahid in the path of Allah. This person is like the warrior in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, they understood uh, in the context in which Rasulullah was speaking at the time or to the people he was speaking, his audience, they understood the great bounties and benefits and virtues of uh, being a warrior in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, the Prophet is taking some of that emotion from there, some of that understanding from there and saying you get something similar by doing this as well because this is such an important aspect. And generally this kind of uh, thing happens along with uh, jihads that are taking place or after jihads that have taken place and thus this needs to be taken care of as well. And the, uh, and the narrator then says, وَأَحْسِبُهُ قَالْ I also think that the Prophet ﷺ said, كَالْقَائِمِ لَا يَفْتُرْ وَكَالصَّائِمِ لَا, ي, uh, لا, لا يُفْطِرْ That this is, uh, the, uh, in fact, this person who works uh, to facilitate for, uh, or, uh, for um, uh, widows and for the needy, then they are like the person who stands at night time to pray, not getting tired. So just imagine several hours standing at night for prayer, which is very, very difficult. This person gets a similar reward for that because it's for humanity. And likewise, the person who is constantly fasting, hardly ever not fasting, that's a huge reward. And people understand these rewards and thus the Prophet ﷺ is extending these to also looking after the needy and for widows. Then you have another hadith in which uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, Hadith of Bukhari this time from Sahl ibn Sa'd radiallahu anhu, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, that Anna Wakafil Yatimi Lahu Auli Gairihi Fil Fil Jannati Hakata Wa Ashara Bisabati Wal Wusta Wafarra Jabaina Huma Shayan. This hadith of Bukhari related from Sahal ibn Sa'd Radiallahu An says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that myself I am along with the orphan uh, sorry, along with those who look after orphans. The person who looks after an orphan of his own or an orphan of somebody else is going to be in paradise with me like this. He put out his middle finger and his index finger and he just left a small space between them. He opened them slightly to say they're going to be very, very close. I mean, you have to understand what that means. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam. if you can just get an understanding of his status, just to give you an understanding of what his status is, his status, even compared to the rest of the prophets, any of the other prophets, is like between the earth and the heaven. The Prophet ﷺ is up there, the other prophets uh, have that much of a difference. Just between the, the other prophets are obviously way more higher than any other human beings, any of the other human beings. But the Prophet ﷺ's status is very, very high. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying that if you want an upgrade in Jannah, and you want to go there and you want to be upgraded, you will understand, you want to be in my position, close to me, similar to where I am, then you need to look after the orphans. The, you have to remember the Prophet ﷺ himself was an orphan. Because an orphan, just to define what an orphan is, an orphan is the person who's lost a father while still young, meaning while not mature. Before the age of bulugh, as we call it, you know, between the age of 13, 14, or 15, if a person, boy or girl, loses their father, right? whether they have their mother or not, that, that doesn't give them the title of Yameen, uh, of Yatim. Yatim is a person who doesn't have a father because the understanding is that once you don't have a father, then they're going to be very, very vulnerable. So even if they still have their mother, you don't have to lose both parents to be a Yatim, you just have to lose your father. So if a person has lost his mother but not his father, he is not technically, he or she is not technically called a Yatim, though of course, uh, definitely uh, somebody who needs our compassion as well. So a yatim is a boy or a girl before the age of bulugh, until the age of bulugh rather, who doesn't have a father. Uh, after the person matures, then he's a man or a woman. He or she is a man or a woman, and then after that, they're not considered yatim. So you can't have an adult yatim as such. You can have an orphan who you, you know uh, who was who was an orphan at one time. So the Prophet ﷺ is really, really encouraging that. So what does he mean in this hadith by the person who looks after his own yatim or somebody else's? How could you look after your own yatim? Your own yatim means, for example, your grandson, your granddaughter. So for example, your own son passed away and he left behind children, so you look after them. Or for example, your brother passed away, your sister passed away, their children. 
Now obviously the understanding is that if you have orphans from your own family members, your son or daughter passed away, brother or sister passed away, somebody related to you passed away and they left children, you look after them. That's understandable, that's going to be a demand of kinship. That's going to be a demand of your relationship anyway. So that's understandable. But the Prophet is saying that is that uh, Prophet is saying you get reward for that as well. And if they are orphans of someone else, you don't even know who this person is. They come from a completely different background, not connected you, to you at all. You still get that reward. You get the reward for both of them because they are orphans. They need your help they, and, and they, we need people to look after them. So this incentive is given for that. The Prophet then said in another hadith, which is related by Imam Tirmidhi, that uh, Abu, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu relates, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that man qabada yatiman, whoever takes on, takes out a yatim, takes out an orphan, min bainil muslimin, from among the believers. So in the community, there's somebody whose father passed away and you started looking after that person. So locally, somebody's father passed away and you're going to look after that person. Now, I know in this country, there's a welfare system of sorts and the mother, even if she's not working, she may be working, but if she's not working, there's going to be some amount. But I mean, we've dealt with these kind of situations uh, through Nawal uh, Benevolence Fund as well. And they are still vulnerable because they find it very difficult to make ends meet, especially on what you, you get. There's not, it's not always enough. And we do, do need people to help them. And you know, above the financial support that you can give to such people, there's another kind of support which is probably equally, if not more important, and that is moral support. Because when a woman loses her husband, for example, when a child loses their father, right, or their mother for that matter, then it's very, I mean, you can't give them a replacement. I mean, you can't give them a complete replacement, but you can definitely make them feel welcomed and helped. And you can assist them. I mean, look at the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his father passed away before he was he was born. He was born, so of course his grandfather had taken responsibility in a sense. His mother was there, but then his mother passed away when he was just a few years old as well. And then after that, his grandfather took care of him. His grandfather passed away. Then his uncle took care of him. So you can see that this tradition was there. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, alhamdulillah, when people you get to look after them. The children grow up healthy in good environment. Of course, with the Prophet ﷺ, there was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving him all the support that he needed as well. But generally speaking, you need that support and a community can give that support. So that's why we have to think about these things. If we know people locally, we need to worry about them. And then we need to think about people from other countries like Syria and other places that, that need our help in this regard as well. The Prophet ﷺ says in this hadith that whoever takes on an orphan, takes out an orphan from among the, the community, إِلَىٰ طُعَامِهِ وَشَرَابِهِ For his food and drink. He takes on his responsibility of food and drink. Then أَدْخَلَهُ اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةَ أَلْبَتَّةَ the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter him into Jannah for sure. Al-Battata, for sure, definitely. It's a word of emphasis. He will definitely uh, enter him into Jannah, into paradise, except unless he's done a sin that cannot be forgiven through this. So he's done some kind of major sin, he's going to have to do tawbah for that. But otherwise, this person, this is such a ticket that it will enter you into paradise. It's a very powerful ticket. Unless there's some very serious crime that you've committed, which will prevent you, uh, which will overturn this ticket. Otherwise, you will go into Jannah. Sins like kufr, shirk, bloodshed, murder, etc. You know, the kind of serious sins. These are considered to be, you know, hukuk al-ibad generally, and uh, just violence and so on. Uh, I mean, these kind of people, uh, I mean, somebody who commits murder and tyranny, they wouldn't have that kind of compassion generally anyway, unless they completely turned around and made tawbah. And if they've made tawbah, then these people are forgiven anyway. So these are people who haven't made tawbah that this is speaking about. There's a, another hadith that's related by Imam Ahmad and Imam Tirmidhi from Abu Umama radiallahu an. And I mean, just, just look at the way the Prophet sallallahu has dealt with this on every level. He's dealt with it on the level of just looking after the widows in general and people in need in general. That just encompasses everybody. Then he speaks about looking after an orphan, whether that be your own orphan of your family or somebody else's orphan, and the huge reward you get for that. Then the Prophet ﷺ again emphasizes that in a number of different ways. 
Right? I've just mentioned to you two hadith in that regard. And then the, the third narration that I'm going to mention to you, the fourth narration actually, uh, this narration is about compassion. It's not just about giving money. Today it's become very easy to look after a yatim, to be honest. You know how much it costs? It costs about 365 pounds or something. One pound a day. That's the average to look after your team in many countries. If you go to places like Ummah Welfare Trust and a number of these other organizations, they will, uh, let, you know, they, they, they will give you the option of picking a team in different countries. They will then send you every year the, the name and certain reports about this person. So you kind of have some kind of connection. You feel some kind of connection to this person. Sometimes some of these people also send you a picture of this person. And it's become a lot more easier. You don't even have to bring people into your house, right? So a lot of people may do this, that they will spend, I mean, 365 pounds or so is not even enough for a person to look after themselves for one month in this country, for a single person. We are paying that much to look after a yatim, an orphan in another country for the entire year. You're giving one year life to somebody else. That, that's quite amazing. I mean, life, life is very important. And generally, we don't respect our life because we don't see it going so fast here because Alhamdulillah, we're in a relative state of security and safety. We don't see violence against lives in, you know, within our circles as much as what you see. But when you see what's going on in other countries and people are losing their life, and those who don't lose, in, uh, don't lose their life, they are displaced, being forced to do some really, really bad thing. I mean... For example, in Turkey, in those border areas with Syria, the children are being now employed in their thousands in clothing companies and so on. Children as young as seven, eight, nine, doing menial work like this, working adult hours for half the pay of adults. And they, the, the employers there, they prefer to take on the children because they're much more easier to deal. They can, you know, t tell them to bring coffee, tea, whatever it is. They do all the tasks, but they're being forced to work. Now, you might say, well, children have worked before, but the problem is this, that in this time and age, without a decent education, it's very difficult, you know, for a person to be literate and so on. These ch children who are being forced to work, they're not going to school. They're not going to school. And the reason they're not going to school, even though in Turkey, education for even refugee children is for free. Um, but most of these children, at least 300,000, 400,000 children are not working, uh, sorry, are not going to school because their families can't support themselves without their children working because the adults aren't given jobs because uh, they, they are like a competition to, uh, I mean, I'm just talking about Turkey. I mean, there's other countries this is an issue. So they, they only give the children jobs that the children have to go out to work and thus they can't go to school and then they're just going to grow up illiterate and which is very sad and that's not the right way to do these things. So when we don't see this for ourselves, we feel that it's all fine. It's just that we have a relative state of safety, but we have to do our part. So in this hadith, this tells you what else you can do over and above giving money and helping financially. In this hadith, Abu Umama radiallahu anhu reports, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that man masaha ra'sa yatimin lahu, right? No, man, man masaha ra'sa yatimin lam yamsahu illa lillah kana lahu likulli sha'ratin o bikulli sha'ratin yamurru alayha yaduhu hasanat. Anybody who passes his hand over the head of an orphan Passing your hand over the head of an orphan means you do it in compassion. You're saying, you know, I'm here to protect you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to make you feel at home. Not for any other reason. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, he doesn't do this except for Allah's sake. He does this purely for Allah's sake. Because he feels the compassion. He's got that softness in the heart. It's not just about quickly giving money to somebody. But no, he feels something in his heart. Then for every... Every hair that his hand passes over, and there's a lot of hair on people's heads. Every hair that your hand passes over, you get reward for every single hair. Hasanat. For every hair. And then, woman ahsana ila yatimatin aw yatimin indahu. Whoever deals beautifully 
and well, whoever does good for that yet orphan girl or boy that he has, then kuntu ana, kuntu ana wa huwa fil jannati kahatain. Then uh, uh, myself and he, myself and he are like this in jannah. The Prophet sallallahu said, and he said wa far uh, wa wa qarana bayna isba'ihi, and then he put his two fingers together. So while not just completely together like this, but you know they are like this, very close to me. You know, like you say to people, we're like this, which means you're very, very close. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Hadith of Ibn Majah, by the way. خير بيت في المسلمين بيت فيه يتيم يحسن إليه. The best home of a believer is the one in which there is an orphan who is dealt with well in that home. They deal with them well." Deal with them like their own children or even better. وَشَرُّ بَيْتٍ فِي الْمُسْلِمِينَ بَيْتٌ يُسَاءُ بَيْتٌ فِيهِ يَتِيمٌ يُسَاءُ إِلَيْهِ Which means that it's that home, the worst of the homes are the, is the one in which there's a yatim who is deal, dealt with very badly. And a person doesn't give them what they need. A person doesn't give them what they need. This is, this is the general encouragement. This is our way of Islam. This is our way of Islam. This is Islam's way of helping each other. Not everything's a business. But this is purely as human beings, we need acts of compassion that we can do for a healthy lifestyle. Research shows that human beings, if they don't do acts of compassion, then they are miserable. Those, do who, do, those who do acts of compassion they are much happier than people who don't. Because giving to others makes you feel much better. And they've got it down. I mean, the research today is so amazing. They've got it down to the, the exact chemicals that are released when you do an act of compassion. How you feel. It makes you much better. It makes you healthy, healthier. Removes depression from your life. If you have depression in your life because, you know, you've got a bad situation in your family, you know, maybe a husband and wife problem, you know, maybe some other problem with, with parents or somebody else. And it's a long-lasting one. You, none of you can get out of it because sometimes you just become entrenched and then it becomes a lifestyle to do that. You don't know how to make it different. You feel discomfortable. In fact, you become comfortable in the situation though you're uncomfortable. You actually become in, just completely comfortable in that. See, you don't know any other way. You're too deeply entrenched. Try to just assist others and help others. And it will make you forget your way and it will show you another way out. At least human, as a human being, you're personally speaking, deep down in your mind and heart, you will be doing something else as opposed to just focusing on your own misery, which you can't get out of, which you feel you can't get out of rather. And Allah will make a way to do this. Allah will make a way to do this. Acts of compassion are really, really beneficial, especially when you put your heart to them. And that's why the Prophet is saying, put your, putting your hands over, passing your hands over, which means showing affection, showing affections. That's why Imam Ahmad, he relates another hadith which is exactly in this vein. This is, I told you, this is the third level of discussion here, right? Which is not just financial help, but actually compassionate help, moral help, which is just to make people feel good. It's not just about here, take the money and go. The Prophet Sallallahu said, hadith related by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, that a person came and he complained to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the hardness of his heart. My heart is very hard, nothing impacts me. I can't cry, I can't feel, I can't, I can't feel any spirituality. I don't feel like doing anything. You know, the Quran, when I read, I don't benefit. I don't even feel like reading the Quran. I feel estrangement. I feel a form of darkness difficulty, when I'm in good surroundings in the masjid, uh, when I'm trying to, in Ramadan or whatever the case is, around pious people, I've got a hard heart. You know what the Prophet ﷺ told him to do? He said, Imsah ra's al yatim. Go and put your hand over the head of a yatim. Feel a connection. You know, one is you look at an orphan, the other one is you go close enough, you get into their kind of private space in a sense, you, you bond to a certain degree. You know, in a very pure way, you put your hand over them and you start feeling suddenly. 
You know, that's what it is. You start feeling. From a distance, you can't feel anything. Subhanallah, you read these stories and today with the visionary, with the, with the vision, uh, with all the visualization of all of the wars and everything that we see around us, it's made us, our tolerance level, our disgust level, it's just out of the roof. It's, it's, before, these things would be very disgusting, but now it's not because the gory details, we've seen them all and nothing bothers us anymore. It's quite normal now, it's become normalized in our mind. So when you actually feel somebody, when you, you know, when you actually feel close to them, then you feel a connection and you feel maybe the difficulty that they may be going through. You'll see their eyes, you'll see their face, you'll see their expression. You'll sense their need. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said, Imsah ra's al yatim. Go and put your hand, pass your hand over the head of a yatim. Wa al miskin. Go and feed some needy people. When you see them and the satisfaction that they get, when you fed them, that look on their face, believe me, it will just have all of the good chemicals in your body just coursing through your body and the sense of satisfaction that you will get will be amazing. Soften your heart out. You'll want to do it again. So you can't soften your heart by just sitting at home doing nothing. You have to do something, get in the field and do something and then you will see that this will benefit you. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said. مَنْ فَرَّجَ عَنْ مُسْلِمٍ قُرْبَةٍ Anybody who removes the difficulty from another Muslim. Allah فَرَّجَ عَنْهُ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامِ Allah will remove a difficulty of the Day of Judgment from him. The difficulties on the Day of Judgment have no relief. They, they are difficulties. Difficulties in this world are short-lived. إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى With every difficulty comes ease in this world. As Allah says in the Quran. But in the hereafter, a difficulty is a difficulty. What we need in this world, you know, just from a religious perspective, you know, is that we have all of these side investments that are working for us. We've paid for a yatim here, we've looked after another one there, we've, pay, you know, we've helped some poor people and needy people here and there. And we carry on doing the best that we can do for ourselves in this world. Then on the Day of Judgment, all of these investments will be realized. You're saying, oh yes, I did one year pay for a yatim. I did do this. I did do that. You'll see all of this coming together and then you'll just be so satisfied. You'll just be so satisfied. Like a person who uh, finds in his home some money that they may have you know, kept behind some shelf or behind some bed or something like that and they've forgotten about it. And they're in some need and whatever and then suddenly one day somebody's cleaning there and they find, what is this? This is money. Or something like this. You know, this is the, the, the satisfaction on the Day of Judgment will be even higher because you'll need every penny on that day. And the difficulty that will be removed. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said in a narration of Abu Sa'id al Khudri, قال قال وسلم, any Muslim who gives clothing, who clothes another Muslim, ثوبًا على عرن, and when the person is in need for those clothing, then Allah will clothe him from the greenery of paradise because the clothing in Jannah is going to be very natural according to the many ahadith they're going to come from trees there will be garments that will be produced from the fibers of trees it seems completely natural I mean today the you know cl clothing from cotton from bamboo and from other natural fibers like this and any Muslim who feeds another Muslim for on, uh, on, on hunger then Allah will feed him from the beautiful fruits of paradise and any Muslim who gives another Muslim to drink when they're in need when they are thirsty then Allah will give them from Ar-Rahiq Al-Makhtoom from Ar-Rahiq Al-Makhtoom which is the special drink of paradise Allah will give them to drink from there so فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ as Allah says in the Quran when it comes to orphans, do not repel them, but do something for them. And فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدْعُ الْيَتِيمِ Allah curses and criticizes the person who would shoo away the orphans. كَلَّا بَلَّا تُكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِيمِ Nay, you would never honor the orphans. You never honored the orphans. Can you imagine on the Day of Judgment if we've never helped an orphan what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may say to us? Now some of us are, might be thinking, well, it's not a wajib, it's not a fart. 
But don't every one of us want a bit of a... You know, like for example, um, when it comes to the world, uh, generally there are certain investments that are very hot. So at sometimes it's shares and stock. It's the stock market. Sometimes it's stock market in the tech companies. And then it passes and you just feel and you hear that person made a lot of money, that person made a lot of money, that person made a lot of money. And you feel, oh, I wish I knew. Now going into that market is useless. You know, it's, that time has passed. People have made their money and moved on. Another time it's on the housing market. Another time it's on, you know, something else. So these are things like this. Now with us, what we have is we've got our whole life and these markets are always high. They are always orphan market in the sense of assisting orphans. So essentially, don't we want it that when we finish from this world, that we would have had some, we would have had that investment as well. It, it, it's not difficult, believe me. Those who are sitting here today, those who are listening, all you do is, if you can't do it for yourself, that's fine. Just get your family members to chip in. So you've got a, you know, you, the, husb the husband and wife, and you've got children. Children should have some saving as well. Encourage the children and say, look, this, this is going to cost three things. This is a person. You know, give them, mention these narrations to them. And say, we just need to put, and believe me, children will help you. Okay, here, uh, 20 pounds, 25 pounds from, 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 from my savings. 25 pounds from my savings. So get some money from the children, right? Even if that be five pounds, 10 pounds of their, you know, make them forego one, uh, one week of their spending money. That's how you're going to get them to learn how to spend for others as well. Otherwise, they're going to, be, they're going to grow up selfish, subhanAllah. So get them to spend. Believe me, um, try this and you'll be surprised that even your, your six-year-old child will want to chip in. SubhanAllah, your six-year-old child, child would want to chip in. You know, when you tell them about what other people are suffering and how children like them don't get the food that, these, that, that our children get. So you, you get that money together and then, um, uh, and then the, the, the mother and father can just put in the rest of the money. And this way it's, it's done together. And that way you get your whole family to take part. And believe me, people have done this and it's very beneficial. And then you, you, know, you, you send that money to a relief uh, organization that's doing this. And then uh, several months after that, uh, towards the end of the first year, you, you will get the information as to who you're, and then you show that to the children, you show that to the family, and uh, you know, everybody can really, subhanAllah, get excited about this. So it's an investment. It's training for our children and our families to do this as a whole together. And Allah has given us this opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah take away masaib and difficulties from us. If Allah is saying that if you relieve a difficulty from another person in this world, Allah will relieve a difficulty from you in the hereafter, why wouldn't He then relieve also a difficulty of yours in this world? The only reason I think that's not mentioned is because when you look at somebody else's difficulty that you don't have, then you feel you have no difficulty. Though we do have other difficulties, difficulties always come up. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we're concerned about the hereafter. So He says, you remove their difficulty now, Allah will remove their diffi your difficulty in the hereafter. But that, I believe that includes removing our difficulties in this world because every good deed does that for us. So I'm not here to fundraise. I'm not here talking on behalf of, speaking on behalf of any organization. This is just something that I think is very important for us to do, right, really. And this is just the partial help that we can do. And it allows us to fulfill the command in the Quran to help the yatim, not to repel them, Though they may not have come to our footsteps, uh, our doorsteps, but at the end of the day, we need to feel that this is on our doorstep, because it could be anywhere tomorrow. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala help us. So, kalla balla tukrimun al yatim. You never honored the you never honored the orphan. When are we going to ever do that? Subhanallah. And inna ma yaakulun amwal al yatama zulman. Inna ma yaakulun fi butunihim nara. In Surah Al Nisa, Allah says that. They eat, they consume the wealth of orphans oppressively. All they're doing is they are feeding their stomachs hellfire. They're feeding their stomachs fire from the inferno. These are obviously people who are abusing your teams today. Not giving them what they are owed, taking away their parents' wealth that they may have left for them. And subhanAllah, subhanAllah. 
I mean, you look in the, in the Quran, Surah Al-Kahf, where Khadir alayhi salam, he puts up that wall that was about to break even though that the local in, uh, inhabitants there did not feed them. Musa alayhi salam asked him why and then later he found out it was because that wall was owned by two, what was the property of two yatim, two orphans. Parents had died and there was some wealth buried there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to put up that wall so that that wealth of theirs would be preserved and they would find it when they're older when it would be less open to abuse by people around them. So we see that Allah divinely protects these kind of things. And see, the, see, what, see what, how Allah loves these kind of people. So we want to inshallah benefit from Allah's love for these kind of people by assisting them because Allah loves those who assist His bonds people. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa Every, I want everybody to go home today and talk this over with the family, right? Remember some of these narrations if you can. This video will be uploaded uh, sometime, inshallah, in the near future on Zamzam Academy if you want to refer back to it. But otherwise, you look online, you know, you look in the Quran, you look in the Ahadith, you will find these narrations. Just sit down with the family and sponsor a team this weekend. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this from us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an understanding of these things. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.